You know, when you're scrapbooking, there's never a reason to reinvent the wheel. So what I've done here is I made this layout about a year ago and I really liked it. I just like the way that the big feathers went, the large white space. I thought the design of it was really nice, this kind of Polaroid-esque picture. So when I sat down to scrapbook the other day, I thought, why don't I just do a scrap lift of myself? And that's when I made this layout. And as you can see, it's very similar. Not only is the design very similar, but even the colors are similar. There are a couple small changes and we could play one of those games that's like, you know, how is this one different from the other? But the basic idea is the same, which made it really easy and maximized my creative time. So I wanna show you exactly how I put it together and maybe you'll be able to maximize your creative time. I'm starting with a sheet of white cardstock and we're gonna be using so little paint that it's not gonna wrinkle or warp or have any of those problems, okay? And then I'm gonna start with a stencil and the hardest decision is whether you want to use a little stencil or a big stencil and I'm going to use a big stencil. Now one of the things is that this is a stencil that is meant to layer meaning it's got an inside portion and an outside portion. So we're gonna start with the inside portion. And I'm using uh, some palette paper. You could use wax paper, you could use a paper plate, whatever it is. It, this is just to put my paint out on. And I've limited myself to a uh, palette of three colors and I've kept everything warm. Generally speaking, if you don't wanna get mud when you're mixing paint colors, you wanna stick either all warms, meaning colors like yellow, orange, orange, red, pink, or all cools, meaning blues, greens, stuff like that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is figure out exactly where I want my feather to be, and I feel like we're gonna come in right there, okay? And then I'm simply going to take the wide end of my cosmetic wedge sponge. Now these are the same sponges you would use on your face. I'm going to dip it into the paint, but this is too much paint. This much paint is going to create a lot of what we call stencil roll under, meaning I won't get the nice clean design I want. So I'm gonna tap off. And once I tap off, you'll see how little paint is actually in there. And that's because water is kind of the enemy of stenciling. So I'm gonna tap up and down in an up and down motion through my stencil, up and down. I tend to start with my lightest color just because I like to, but that's not a hard and fast rule. And every time I go into my paint, I am sure to tap off. Now I'm fast at it because I've been stenciling for a long time, so let me slow down and do that. I'm going to tap in and then off again so that I had, don't have a lot of paint on here. And I'm gonna continue to go up and down through here. Now if you're fast, this is what it normally looks like for me at real speed. And I am just going, 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 and I don't even really have to think about it. I'm just flying through the stenciling. And I think it's important to bring your stenciled images off the edge of the paper, which is what you can see if I lift the stencil up, ooh, for my first feather, right here, I've gone off that edge so that it looks like, instead of being contained in the center, it's a real design. Now, when I wanna switch colors, I don't actually have to get a new sponge. Here's a thrifty tip. I'm gonna take a pair of scissors and I'm simply going to cut off the part that's painty. And now I have a nice, clean sponge to work with. Now here's something else. Stencils are double-sided, right? There's no right and there's no wrong side. So if I want a feather to go in a different direction, for instance, I was stenciling on this side, I can simply flip my stencil to get it going in the other direction. So we're gonna switch into the pink and I'm gonna move this over slightly so I don't end up with my stencil right into my paint palette. That happens to me actually more often than I'd like to admit. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing. Now, I want you to notice how I'm layering on top. Acrylic paint is fairly opaque, so you never have to worry that much about going over something and if it's gonna muddy it. The other thing, of course, is that we're putting on such a very thin layer of paint that the other paint under it is not wet, so I'm not picking up any of that. If you were using spray inks or something that was a little wetter, then you might want to wait a moment or two or grab a heat gun or something like that before you went into this next layer. But you can see how nice and easily this just glides right across the top and you know, again, the thing I like about stencils is that you can create the same look over and over and over again with no problem. And you can also create so many interesting variations. I think it would be great to try this page with some cools and see how that changes things. So there you go. You can see I have my second feather on here now crossing right over. You can see a little bit of the yellow through there, but it's not that bad. So 
I have one here, which is already all stenciled up. You can see that. And we're gonna go on to do the next layer. That's the outside feather area, because this is a stencil that's meant to layer. So the fussiest part is making sure that you line up exactly the outside with the inside. Now, if it's not super exact, nothing bad's gonna happen. The crafting police are not gonna come to your house knocking on the door wondering what you're doing. Okay, so I lined that up so it's generally correct. However, I know that I don't want it to go into the red area or into the pink area. I only want it to be in the yellow area. So that's where I have these magical sticky notes. Um, and these are just going to basically mask off the area that I don't want the paint to go. It doesn't have to be perfect. If you are worried about it being perfect, you can totally and completely take some scissors and really do a lot of work. I'm a lazy, lazy crafter and I do not feel like doing that. The same, so I'm just actually gonna rip this post-it in half for this little bit, but now I have a nice area. I know where I'm going. I'm gonna take my sponge, do my same dip in. Too much paint, tap it out. And you'll notice, by the way, that I'm using actually a dark navy blue. It's actually called Payne's Gray. That's the color of the paint, um, as opposed to a black. And the reason for that is I really think that using a hard black line, which actually is one of my favorite things to do, but it, it's really aggressive. Whereas a navy or the Payne's Gray that I have here, this is gonna be a little more subtle so that it doesn't quite get that boldness. And remember that anything with less moisture is going to be clean. So spray ink is going to be more messy with more roll under. Acrylic paint is going to be less. Ink pads are super neat. Airbrush, because it has, you know, it's air instead of water going through there is going to be really neat. And let's see what it looks like. Ooh, pretty cool, right? And you can see how the area that I masked off is perfectly fine. And of course, my feathers go two different directions. So I know that eventually I'm going to have to flip this template over. But for now, I'm gonna line this one up the way that I want it. And there's nothing that says that it has to be exactly as it looks. There's something in um, printing called offset printing that's very popular where you go slightly off of what you're supposed to. And there you go, that feather's gonna go there. And then I would just repeat the same process up and down, up and down, up and down, doing my lots of thin layers. Now, if we look back at the finished layout, there are a couple things that I wanna bring your attention to. So. Right here, you can see this looks like a Polaroid picture. And people often say, how, how do you get a Polaroid in this day and age? Well, you, I'm sure you can find an ancient you know, camera like that. But what I do is I take a regular photo printer that prints out four by six photos. You can also send this online somewhere to do it. And I just print out a small square photo. Then you can see that if I cut right here, I have a magical Polaroid photo, which I think is an easy technique. And then all I did on my finished layout is I used some hand carved stamps stamped right across there. You could use commercial stamps too. Fed it through a typewriter for my title, added my journaling, and I'm totally done.